talking about seven signs of emotional cheating. This is insidious, it is rampant, and we're gonna identify it cleanly and clearly. Hey guys, I am Jeremy Rodruck, your strong marriage and amazing kids guy, and today we're talking emotional cheating. Unfortunately, I have a fair amount of clients, and this is the this is the tipping point of when their marriages collapse because they didn't know how to engage it, how to identify it, how to address it. What do I do? They could feel something wasn't right. So let's dig in. Okay, so emotional cheating. First off, let's identify what is emotional cheating. This can be in friendships, but mostly we see it in an intimate relationship or in a marriage. And it is when your significant other, or even yourself, you're getting your needs met, your emotional needs, your mental intimacy needs, you're getting them met by somebody other than your partner. And it's a very dangerous place to be because it starts to shift the dynamics in your relationship and it starts to shift where you go when things get tense. When things are stressful, instead of leaning into your partner, you lean into this other source. And so let's identify what's going on. Now, a lot of times in an emotional cheating situation, it is not this big, huge fight that drives your, your lover or your wife or your husband into the arms of another person. It is a friendship. It's a reconnection. It's a, oh, this is my friend from 10, 20 years ago. Oh, this is an old coworker. Oh, we went to college. Oh, we grew up. There's always some simple little thing. And it's like, oh, this person from my past, or, oh, this is just a guy at work I talk to sometimes at lunch. It's no big deal. But we start to notice our partners spending more time thinking, talking, texting about somebody other than us. And there's a friend at work, a colleague, a coworker, and they're texting a lot. They're communicating a lot. And they start to hide that communication. They lie about it. They turn their phone over. They put their phone down and stop texting when you're in the room. Already, that's like the first warning sign. It's like, why are they putting so much time and energy into this other person? Number two, they, when they communicate with this other person, they forget to mention that they're married. They forget to mention they have kids. They forget to mention that they are in a relationship. They do everything they can not to bring up you or to bring up the other parts of their life so that they can just be rekindling this old connection from the past like it never ended. Number three is going to be attraction. There's going to be some level of chemistry, some level of connection, and they're going to play it off. Oh, no, no, it's innocent. No, no, we're just comfortable with each other. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. We've always talked like that. We've always kind of been flirty. It's no big deal. But if your hackles are getting up, you're feeling uncomfortable, you're like, that, that's a little too familiar. You should probably listen to those instincts. You should listen to those feelings. Okay, number four is going to be, you'll notice as this other relationship is happening more and more frequently, you are getting less physical, mental, emotional, and social intimacy. Your partner is just withdrawing. They're not sharing as much. They're more taciturn. They're more quiet with you. They're more withdrawn, sullen, moody. And you're like, why the static? They're extra sensitive. They fly off the handle. They get overly worked up about stuff. Number five is going to be they share their frustrations with you, with your relationship, with being a mom or being a dad, being a parent. They're going to share that stuff with the other person. When they start sharing those emotional vulnerabilities, that's actually a way to start building connection and building rapport with somebody else and getting validation. You're, you're, it's okay, you can feel that way. and well, Maybe they're just not right for you. And that's where the dial really starts ticking over and those cracks start to show up. You'll also start noticing a lot of times pet names being used and extra levels of familiarity. Oh, this is my work wife. This is my work husband. So when they start having pet names for people kind of that haven't been in their life since the beginning of your relationship, again, that's another warning sign. Be wishing that you were like this other person, saying it to you, complaining to you. Well, so-and-so is so much nicer, so much more understanding, so much more patient. And they're comparing you to them. Well, they have this car, they have this income, they have this life, they travel, they this, they this, they this. It's a lot of wish fulfillment, a lot of fantasy projection. And the last piece is when you start to bring this up to your partner and say, hey, I'm not feeling okay with this relationship. I'm not feeling comfortable with the level of time, the communication, the whatever, all the things I've already outlined for you. And rather than be open to that and respect your concerns and engage with you, they get defensive they justify, I'm allowed to have this. I can be friends with this person. You can't tell me who I can't be friends with. Why are you always trying to control me? 
say those sorts of resistances are telling you you're out of rapport with your partner and they are getting a lot of their emotional needs met in a different place than you. And those are really the signs for emotional cheating. And unfortunately, this is a situation, it can be uncomfortable, it can be scary, but if you do not engage with this, it is not going to get better over time. It's not gonna improve itself magically. This really is gonna be a position you're gonna end up in. Look, is our relationship solid? Are we gonna do this? Or do we need to end this? And if you've got kids involved, it gets messy and ugly really, really fast. So what are you gonna do about it besides reaching out to me and we can talk one-on-one, -on -one, possibly do a couples session? Um, I would say go get my intimacy course. Uh, we have the link down below. It's a 75 minute workshop that gets you out of waiting on desire to have an intimate life. And how can you start creating and providing each other moments to connect, moments for sexy fun times, moments for engagement and openness and honesty and vulnerability. Because that's really what's gonna help you to recover this relationship. And at the end of the day, if you're with somebody who doesn't wanna be with you, it's better to know that now than wait longer a time, more enmeshed, more involved, harder for you to extract yourself, they're built up, they're more defensive, and a bigger impact on the kids. The more you both can just be open and honest and own your feelings, own what your goal, what's going on inside of you, the more you can do that, the better for both of you, the better for your kids. The advice I wanna give you today and the thoughts and feelings. And I look forward to your comments down below. What has been your experience? Have you been in a situation of emotional cheating? Did you recover or did you have to bounce out? So please leave a comment down below and I'd love to know more.